Hey there and welcome back to another My Hero Academia Season 7 video. And today we're going to be talking about Episode 9, Extras, which follows off from the big climax at the end of the previous episode, where Todoroki finally takes out his older brother with his new mega attack. And so now we move on. And I would like to say before we go any further that I have read the manga, but I can't remember this arc at all. So I'm pretty fresh and flying blind, so take that for what it is. Let's jump into it, shall we? Okay, so we start off with the cold open, just recapping the climactic final moments of Shoto vs Toya, which ended with Shoto landing a knockout, ice out, blow. Before we go to the intro, we get to see the ending of that scene, where Burnin announces that Toya's down, and the rest of the random heroes that assembled there go to subdue the rest of the villains, the jailbreakers, and the Nomu, with Ida leading the way. And man, I gotta say, there's a lot of heroes standing very close to where that battle happened, but that fireball that Toya had made earlier... That was huge, so what gives? Didn't all these people collapse from heat exhaustion? How are they all just fine? Mm, anime logic, I suppose. And then we see a tearful All Might getting the news and announcing it to the rest of the strike teams, I guess to raise morale. Hell yeah, it would actually be a massive boost. Like, they weren't even fighting very long, and that's one of the three biggest threats, and he's out for the count. I love that All Might gets so emotional about it too. Oh, and I gotta say, thank God he's in that control room away from all the danger. All Might is too wholesome. They cannot kill him off. Keep this man safe. And then we get to check in on some of the other battles in the wake of Darby's defeat. First up, we have a look at the squad guarding Gigantomachia's prison, following characters like Mina, Mount Lady, Kirishima, Mineta. So it's one of the more ragtag bands of heroes, and they're defending a character who, if unleashed, would pretty much be an unstoppable force if combined with Shigaraki or All for One. So, kind of expected there to be more power players here, but I guess they really are running low on heroes right now. But yeah, this scene really just serves to check in and plant the seeds for a new fight, as the leader of the villain assault seems to be the guy that murdered Midnight at the Mountain Villa battleground. And Mina notices this, and I'm pretty sure that she and Kirishima are the ones that found the corpse, right? And they have a lot of history with Gigantomachia to begin with. So she notices the guy, and he's straight up monologuing about killing Midnight, so I guess that helps identify him. They have a stare down, she almost gets sneak attacked, but Kirishima swoops in. But then the scene cuts away just as a fresh wave of villains come at them. Damn! I mean, I know they've planted the seeds for that battle, so surely it's coming. I, I just hope we get the full fight, even if it's only four or five minutes. I hope they don't just cut to her taking down the guy in a future episode when they return. That would be disappointing, because I'm actually rather invested in this showdown, so I want to see it at some point. We then check in on a team at the stadium. Tailman, Sugarman, Cellophane. Yeah, nah. Doubt we're going to be seeing much of these guys. They didn't even set up a villain for them to fight, really, which is a shame, but based on the characters that are there, you're not really missing all that much. I mean, I love them all, especially Salafane, but it's not much story here. It's just nice filler sequences for transitioning between the battles. We check out the coffin in the sky where Baka goes fighting Shigaraki still. Not much has changed. And then we move back to the original ambush site where there's a new flower villain who claims to be All For One's personal assassin and who seems to be gearing up to fight against Ayama and Fat Gum to tidy up the loose end of Ayama being a squealer. And since they gave this guy a cool and creepy design and let him monologue for ages, and considering Ayama had a lot of late game development, this is obviously being set up as yet another battle that we get to watch in depth. Probably going to intercut this one with maybe the Mina fight with Midnight's Killer. They're minor fights for minor heroes that probably can't carry their own episode, but together, maybe they can. Maybe also intercut that with the Spinner vs Shoji fight that seems to be on the horizon too. I mean, Spinner now has a new steroids quirk it seems. Dude's looking like Killer Croc from Batman. He's bigger, faster, stronger, and he's marching with an army of heteromorphs to try to liberate Kurigiri. And also he looks a bit unhinged. What are the chances that this new quirk is going to ruin his brain? The new quirks usually are not very compatible with the new body, so I guess growing like that, that quickly, it's probably been bad for him. Also, there's a hell of a lot of villains at this attack, which makes me think that Kurigiri, he's obviously important to the aims of the group, and thus, I think they might actually succeed in bringing him back into play, just to add a bit of intensity, a bit of fear. Also, I gotta say, the fact that every single one of Shoto's classmates is super happy and proud of him, even Bakugo for taking down his brother, hell yeah, that is wholesome stuff. Damn wholesome. And then the next part where Shoto's crying and Ida gives him a hug? Ah, oh, that's the stuff. Although, it's as I thought, Darby ain't done. As the sidekicks question how he's even still alive at this point, and a dark light appears within his chest. It's not a real light, but it's there to show the audience that his dark heart, his bitterness and hate that kept him alive long past the point that he should have died, is still going strong, so he is not done. There's another round yet. Just half-time entertainment right now. I mean, realistically, there needs to be a second part with all the Todorokis there fighting. Well, I mean the hero Todoroki. Somehow I think the others would not be able to keep up. 
And then it's over to the old mountain villa, where on the ground, lots of battles are raging. But in the air, we have a standoff. There's all for one, and our classic duo, Endeavor and Hawks. And Endeavor is also feeling the feels about Shoto defeating Darby, but it's probably not the best time for that news, because he needs full focus. As not only is All For One a font of numerous deadly quirks he can whip out at will, but Hawks has been utterly nerfed and has not recovered from being brutalized by Darby the last time they fought, so it'll be a tough battle here. And I'd actually argue that they haven't come with enough heavy hitters to stand a chance. Like, I know they said they don't want to risk him stealing anybody's quirks, but Jesus, you need at least one or two more people, as we see in a moment. And of course, All For One is also the master of talking shit and getting in your head, which he does here by mocking Endeavor about what he's done to his sons, before the heroes rush him, and it just doesn't work. Feels like he's toying with them quite easily at first, dodging and blocking attacks, especially Hawks, who slowed down tremendously from his peak. Sad to see. But of course, credit where credit's due, this fight makes Endeavor look strong as shit. I love it. He's able to get all for one on the back foot and keep him stuck behind his shield, and he's starting to power through it. And I think if Hawks was actually on his top form, they might have actually won quite quickly here and managed to kill him. But of course, Hawks is not at top strength, which lets All For One buy enough time to do what he does best, and that is talk some tremendous shit. Just like he did to All Might at Kamino, he talks shit about personal issues. And I really enjoyed this battle. Which is crazy, because this early part is literally just the same move, over and over again. It's just Endeavor hammering the shield whilst Hawks tries to ambush. But it's fun, and it works, because one, makes Endeavor look like a beast, but two, All For One's character is so slippery and slimy that you know he's trying to find a way to make a move, and so you're on the edge of your seat wondering what's going to happen next. Great clash. And then he drops his trump card. Oh, by the way, it was me who stole Toya's body, so really, you should be thanking me for keeping him alive, which in turn gets Endeavor to rage and opens him up to having a chunk of his side ripped out. Ouch! I mean, let's not forget, though, Endeavor is actually a crazy person. He's going to cauterize that, and he's going to keep fighting. Just you watch. But not in time to save Hawks, who is also about to get one-shotted by All For One. Only for Tokoyami and Jiro to swoop in and save the day. And i got to say, some top-class banter between them here as well. Focus, Tokoyami. Focus, son. And of course, they... Well, they're obviously not quite on the level of Endeavor or Hawks. Even weakened Hawks. And I don't think that All For One has much interest in playing with his food when it comes to them. Just calling them side characters for the Demon King. A bit arrogant, but he's probably earned that. And then we check in on Endeavor and check out the chunk missing from the big guy. How is he still conscious? I mean, that's a huge chunk of his stomach that's been ripped out. That would surely lead to blood loss death within seconds, right? Or at least make you black out. And he's just standing there, or crouched over. And Hawks even says that it's all good because it's missed his lungs. <laughs> what about the rest of him? Holy shit, he got gobbled. And speaking of which, All For One is on a time crunch, so he goes for the kill on Jiro, just straight up tries to one-shot her with the scariest move ever. And she's only just saved by Hawks and his feathers, which is helpful because she seems to be the only one that can punch through his mask with her sound waves. Hawks' swords just aren't cutting the mustard. They're not the same as his great old feathers. And I gotta say, it's nice to see her get some shine because, I don't know, I just feel like she hasn't before. Tokoyami's one of those fringe classmates whose quirk was made so powerful early on that it made him a fun character for the author to use in big moments, like when he fought Redestro. But Jiro, outside of the festival, doesn't get many big hero moments, so having her in the battle against All For One, it's very cool. And having her be actually crucial, even better. Although then All For One turns off easy mode and almost one-shots them again with a massive laser cannon, and Tokoyami's coughing up blood, I guess he has some sort of injury, and Jiro loses one of her earphone jacks. Like, fully rips off her ear. Ouch. Very painful and gruesome. My god. It's heating up now. And this looks like it's going to be the battle where the first big injuries and losses are going to be seen. I mean, I doubt they're going to kill a student, but they're going to get walloped. They're going to end up in hospital. And maybe Hawks could die. I don't know. I don't see it, though, to be honest. The author couldn't even commit to killing off Gran Torino. I think key character deaths are almost off the table unless they're a villain by this point. But we'll have to see next time because that's the end of the episode with the next one seemingly sticking with this battle. Good, because it would kill the flow to move on too soon. You've got to see what happens next here. And so with all that being said, these have been my opinions and now I'd like to hear yours. What do you think of the episode? You like it? Hate it? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment and subscribe and let me know.